much to my now sorrow, but I did meet Bernice Abbott. And Bernice Abbott gave me one of her photographs, which hangs very proudly in my home now. And Bernice Abbott joined the group that was called, and is called, Friends of Alice Austin House. So she, Bernice, who saved all the pictures of a French photographer called Eugene Adje, and was a very much a preservationist on her own account, and was also uh, known for pictures of changing New York, which Alice was. So you, you have Alice, who mostly photographed uh, in the 19th turn of the, into the 20th century. You have Bernice, who photographed mostly in the 20th century. And then you have me, who photographed at the end of the 20th century. And um, I very much am proud to put myself in this succession. And I feel very connected with these women, with Francis, with Alice, with Bernice. They are my foremothers. I sought them out. I documented them. And they gave me all kinds of inspiration and life. And I'm very happy to share uh, this work with you. And I think we're just about dark enough to take a look at it. Um, let me see what I forgot. That's it. So we'll take a minute to rearrange, and then we will have our Throwback Tuesday. Have you ever seen this one? I'll go all the way around. I've never seen Oh, she was in Washington. Yes. I did go to Washington. Yeah. Did you know about this house? No, I didn't. No, well, when, when I met Victoria, yeah, that was it. I hadn't. No, I, I, I had no idea. Look how beautiful this is. And you know, there's no rainbow flags around the Stonewall Memorial or monument except for the Stonewall Inn. There's no rainbow flags anywhere in the village. There used to be. And I went to Corey Johnson about four months ago and I said, the Progressive Caucus should do something about this. And he, you know, he, I like Corey, but you know, he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't do anything. And I'm glad to see that there is the, on this flagpole that there's actually a rainbow flag. Oh, <laughs> that's not like this old queen. No, you know, you know. Don't okay. Well, it's our responsibility to educate. If at any point uh, you can't hear or see, please holler. And I want to make it clear that in no way am I claiming to be as good a photographer as Francis Benjamin Johnston, Alice Austin, or Berenice Abbott. I'm just saying I feel they were my foremothers and, um, you know, people would carry on from here, uh, just so you know, I don't, I don't want to say that. So this is what uh, graphics look like before Photoshop. Uh, <laughs> this is little wrapping paper with paste on uh, letters. I hope you appreciate it. That was my, um, that was my motto. Make the invisible visible was my life work. This is the title slide for the show. And then we have even more impressive graphics for each of the... Um, okay. Uh, Alice Austin a contemporary of Francis Benjamin Johnston, uh, was an upper-class Victorian woman, but not a professional uh, pr photographer. This is Alice. Uh, I think she's, oh, I'm going off script already. Okay. 
Alice did not need to support herself, but photographed nearly every day for a certain period in her life. But her photos are of a professional caliber, even though she did not consider herself a professional. She's about 22. This photograph was probably taken by the uncle who was a sea captain and brought Alice her first camera when she was about 10 years old. She loved to go down to the shore and watch the boats go by and photograph them. The thing she did best was photograph her friends and her own daily life. So she left us this incredible record of what it was like living in about the 1880s and 90s on Staten Island. And this is what it looks like. Oh. Now, the curator of the Staten Island Historical Society went out of his way to assure me that this particular pose was, and I quote, a convention of the times. He even managed to come up with another picture with the same pose. What I should have said to him, but didn't, was, indeed, you know, lesbian has been a convention of almost every time. <laughs> Alice Austin loved to be in her own photos and usually placed herself on the far left, which is where she is here. The way that she got herself into the picture was that she had a long shutter release or cable release, which worked somewhat like I can push the button here and the slide changes up there. And that's pretty much how she took a lot of her pictures. Oh. Here we have Alice on the left with Trude Eccleston, the minister's daughter. <laughs> Bad girls with fake cigarettes and showing their petticoats. You have to remember they didn't have a lot to do so they did what they called larking about, which was kind of like hanging out. Now this is one of their costume parties. Uh, Alice and Trude in the nun's outfits. The little tags are from Pear's Soap. Pear's Soap, very pure, like ivory. <laughs> And don't miss the boy in the shawl. <laughs> <laughs> this is Alice on the left and two of her girlfriends, more larking about. <laughs> if you can find the umbrella in this picture, you know they had a sense of humor. <laughs> Her whole crowd was very athletic. Tennis was first introduced to the U.S. on Staten Island, although I'm not sure those two down in the corner really care about that. <laughs> Working out in the gym. If you think pumping iron is something new for dykes, take a look at the woman with the clubs over here on the right. If you're choosing up teams, she's the one you want on your team. The woman hanging from the rings in the bloomers is Daisy Elliott. She organized the whole gym program. When one of Alice's friends wrote a book called Bicycling for Ladies, they got Alice to take pictures and Daisy to do the posing. Biking was quite a big thing because usually you had to be chaperoned. But if you had a bike, then you could take off and get far away on your own. So bicycling for ladies was a pretty revolutionary thing, and here are all of Alice's pictures of how to do it the right way and the wrong way. She rigged up this terrific backdrop. In 19, sorry, in 1899, Alice's life changed. She went to a resort in the Catskill Mountains in New York called Twilight Park. And there she met Gertrude Tate. Now don't mix up Gertrude with Trude. There is Gertrude in the dark skirt, kicking up her heels. She's a dance teacher from Brooklyn. Alice is in the white hat, 
uh, taking it all in.